Good afternoon, everybody. Paul here from Warden's Farm. It's January 6, 2026. I'm working on my first video of the year. Our temperature is 72 degrees. Can you believe that? With 76% humidity and we got a two mile an hour southwest wind. And tomorrow is gonna to be even warmer. We had a little bit of cloudiness in the skies today, but not a whole lot. But I'm gonna go into the bees today and I'm actually gonna take a look and see what kind of eggs that the queens are laying. I'm not doing a deep dive. I'm only gonna check a few frames where the cluster is and see what that they got going on. Reason being is I gotta make up my mind, do I wanna raise more bees to replenish my hives that I've combined or do I wanna go for honey? And I kinda wanna do a little bit of both. So some of them I'm gonna go ahead and let them go for raising honey but I'll have to keep a real good eye on them, make sure they don't swarm. Cause here in about, oh, I'd say 30 days, we're gonna start seeing drone cells. And then 26 days after that, when they start hatching out, the queen and the nurse bees and workers and everything else is gonna start ramping up thinking about swarm season. So everything is starting to pick up a little bit, but we still have cold weather yet to come. These warm days are really messing with the bees where they think, hey, warm weather's here. I need pollen because pollen provides a bunch of different things or they decide that they need the sugar water because I do put out sugar water feedings. Both of them help the bees in different ways. Pollen's pretty important because it's needed in raising bees. Pollen equals protein, which basically equals raising bees because it's needed to build the muscles, glands, and organ development of your bees. Without it, the bees will grow slower and your vitamins like vitamin B, which is needed for uh, growing healthy larvae. Then you get into sugar water. Sugar water is a whole different type of thing that the bees need. Sugar water equals energy. Energy is chiro yeah, energy is carbohydrates and that's what the bees need if you want to uh, basically have a lot more honey because the carbohydrates will tell the nurse bees hey we got stuff available and that way they can tend to the larvae and in return the queen will lay more eggs and then you get bigger growing faster beehives so you got to figure out what you want to do. Do you want to raise uh, bees or do you want to have a lot of honey? We had a bee meeting last night um, where a bunch of us beekeepers get together and there was a master beekeeper from Cornell, uh, Chris Parker. He also runs Bras Bees LLC up in Holly Ridge. Er, no, I'm sorry, in uh, Richlands and Sneeds Ferry. And he brought up a lot of good points on this subject last night too. And I would suggest you got to figure out if you want to raise bees, if you want to have a lot of honey. Myself, I want to do both because I want to replace the beehives that I combined and build my yard back up to 20 hives here and hopefully another 10 down in Sneeds Ferry. And that's when swarm season comes in to help out a lot down there. But we'll be doing splits before too long too. So if you grow your hives too fast and you gotta do splits, you don't wanna have to do splits in the cold weather. Because the main thing you gotta remember is if you're feeding your bees to raise bees, then they're going to grow faster. They're, they have to have drones in order to continue on for the queen to mate, to make swarm cells, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's an ongoing process. And you all know that. I know this. But you got to decide which way you want to go. So I'm going to go jump down in the bees. I'm going to take you with me. We're going to look and see what kind of 
egg patterns that the queens have because it's 72 going up to 74 and tomorrow's 74 to 76 degrees and it's going to be that way all week long and then starting monday next week the temperature comes back of cold and everything's going to take a plunge so i want to make sure they got enough food in the center of the hives and going to move food around so that when they uh, get back into their cluster that they have food available for them so we got a few things we got to do today so let's go get into the bees and see what's going on the bees are bringing in pollen they're bringing in water and they're bringing in probably oh some one-to-one -one sugar water here's a hive that's real active look at the pollen just coming in there All right, the first hive we're gonna look at here is hive one. And hive one has uh, fondant on it. And we're gonna see how much the fondant has been eaten because eh, they've eaten a bit of it. The bees are really spread out right now which is kind of good to see and it will allow me to figure out what they're doing all right looking down inside we got a cluster of bees right underneath the patty i say patty but what i actually mean is the fondant patty there are bees inside here so i'm just going to set that down inside the outer cover Take the spacer off. And this way I can look down inside here. The outer frames, there's no longer honey on them. The inner frames, there's a little, all the guard bees are looking right up at me. So let's just knock them down. So looking down in here, Okay, there's a bunch of bees here, but I want to look underneath. This box looks like it's got, oh, it's a heavy box still. So it's got something in there. I'll look into that in a minute. Knock that down just a hair. I'm just going to pull one of the frames in the center to see what the queen's doing. Pull it up nice and gentle. Wow, cap brood. A lot of pollen up on the top. And there's cap brood as well. I'm looking on the bees to see if I can see any mites when I don't see any, which is really good. You can see it's not a very big cluster of bees, but look at here. What's that? That looks like a drone capping right there. There's nectar out here which is sugar water and look who's right there look at who's right there there's our queen so we're going to put her right back in here and there are a lot of bees down below so now that we've seen our queen Let's see if she's doing anything on the outer frame here. I'm not going to get down into the bottom box. And you can see there's some old honey there. But they are definitely going through the resource. But there's sugar water down inside there. And there's honey there. So we're going to face that inward. There's honey on this frame. So 
So what I'm doing now is I am taking out the empty frames and I'm gonna replenish them with the frames that have honey on them. Case being like this one. Got a little on that side, not much. But this frame here doesn't have any honey. So I'm gonna take this frame out. I'm gonna put this frame in. And that way we're moving the honey closer. to the brood nest and we'll put that over here and I'm gonna do that all the way across Ooh, this is a good frame of honey and again that's got honey that's got honey this one does not so we're gonna swap this one out And if I can reduce the hive in size, that's fine. Because I'm putting all the food by the bees. This one doesn't have any honey either. So this way if they move around, the food is right close to them. So any frame that doesn't have honey, I will move closer to the bees. So that makes it a win-win situation. Oh yeah, that one's got a lot of honey. Oh, this one's got a lot of honey too. Because I don't want to have the same mistake that happened to me before. In the other hive where the bees couldn't get to the honey when the temperatures dropped and that was upsetting so this way we'll get everything just right the food is by the bees let's take out these things we're gonna put oil traps back in right by where the bees can chase the hive beetles into the traps if need be there and the rest of this box is empty so that's good So now I've reduced it by one medium that the bees have consumed the honey. Get down in there. I'll shake the bees out. Put the box down in front of the hive. That way they can get back in there. Then I'll put the spacer on right there the little doohickey thing here I don't know what that's called but it's made for the Hive Alive fondant so you can let the bees get into the whole patty and get on to it and let's get these bees back in here I want to make sure that there's no high beetles and I don't see any uh, let's see there's one right there let's kill him 
See, they like to mimic their scents. And I just want to make sure I ain't got any others in here. There's one right there. It's dead. I'm just going to scatter some bees. And let's let them get back down in there. We will put the inner cover back on. And even though we got warm weather, I'm still going to keep putting this on. I just won't seal up this. Make sure no bees are in it. Ah, oh, there's a couple. Get out of there. Come on, guys. Get in there. Don't want to crush any bees. There. So now I'm getting my pen out of my pocket. I don't know if I'll see this. Yeah. So it is January. What did I say it was? The 6th. 6th. Six. And we reduced queen right and larva. And two drone cells. That's a little too early to be having drone cells, but it is what it is. Not much we can do about it. So finished up the inspection today. Out of 11 hives, four of them are busting through the seams. I can't wait for spring to get here when I can do some splits. And I have two hives out there that are a little small. I could combine the two together, but both have eggs in them. Not a lot, but they both have some. I may get a double screen board and put that on another hive and just set them on top of it. And that way they can at least have enough heat to get through it. Or I may just put a queen uh, excluder on it. And that way the nurse bees can go back and forth and we'll see what happens there. I don't know, I ain't made up my mind on that yet. But the strong hives have lots of honey, lots of honey. The uh, smaller hives, not so much. They still got honey, but they're really, I guess I could say struggling to survive, but they're surviving. So, so far, so good. And like I was saying earlier, you got to figure out if you want to have a lot of bees so that you can do your splits or a lot of bees so that they make a ton of honey. Either way you go, you got to watch them very carefully especially come spring because if they start building the queen cells because they're overpopulated you can pull them queen cells out you can do some selective frames pulling eggs and set them up for success and there's a lot of different things you can do but it's up to you as the beekeeper to figure out what exactly you want to do and just remember pollen is protein and that helps your bees grow. Nectar is carbohydrates, which nectar being sugar water, and that's what will make your bees, according to my notes, uh, fuel the nurse bees to keep brood warm, uh, stimulates the queen to lay eggs. So I wouldn't give them a lot of sugar water right now this time of year because you really don't want your queen to start going crazy laying eggs because we do got a lot, bunch of cold weather coming. So just remember that, that even though we got these warm days in Eastern North Carolina and we got cold days and warm days, that's how the winters go here. So take care of your bees, watch them really close and make sure that the queen doesn't start laying too early because if she does, it could hurt you in the long run. So Paul from Warden's Farm, have a blessed day. We'll see you in just a little while. Take care.